Hello everyone, and this is BioPhoenix here, and today we're taking a look at a PC-98 game. It's been a little bit since I've taken a look at one, or at least it feels like it for me. So the one I'm looking at today is called Orstadia. Yeah, it almost sounds like a Google Stadia exclusive. So it's developed and published by Fuga System, and was released in 1993, Japan only obviously, and it is a, a top-down action RPG. Unfortunately, there is no fan translation, but I did found this game was actually very playable even within its original Japanese text. But I did manage to find a description of the game's story, so I can talk a little bit about that. So apparently, there is an evil god named Barbados. Huh, I wonder if he was from the country Barbados. Well, he was defeated and was sealed forever, supposedly, but then some descendants came around and want to resurrect him. And they need to do that by sacrificing the queen of the country of Orstadia. So then the king sends out uh, four brave heroes to rescue the queen. And of course, those heroes are the playable characters. And yeah, it's basically everything that you would expect. Nothing super crazy mind-blowing, but hey, I'm fine with it. But as for the four playable characters that you get to pick from, there's a lizard man, there is a uh, male human warrior, then there's also a uh, female half-elf, and then there is a dwarf. And believe it or not, this game actually has two-player mode, which is really interesting. And I'll talk more about that much later, but for now, let's start talking about the gameplay. So after selecting the character that you want, then the game starts out where you're in a cave and you do some dungeon crawling. So you fight monsters, gain some EXP, collecting items, and of course you have to figure out on where the hell you're supposed to go. Because there is no map in this game, so sometimes it's very easy to get lost, and there's many doors that are locked for mysterious reasons. It can be very tough to figure out how you're supposed to unlock them. Obviously, you need some type of key or a switch, but sometimes it's never always easy to figure out. So yeah, I'm sure most of you guys are probably thinking that it definitely does look like a Zelda game, and that it definitely does, but if it kind of reminds me of anything, I find this game reminds me of the game Brandish from Falcom. Not just with the way how it's gameplay with its uh, total dungeon crawling and killing monsters, but also with the fact that it even just has like the same type of like aesthetic to it. You know, like just looking at like the caves and shit. So yeah, if you're familiar with that game, it's a pretty easy to understand game to know how to play, but it is also pretty difficult as well. So now, let's get moving on to the game's controls, and the controls in this one really depend on which way you're going to play this game, because you have two options, so you can either play with just the keyboard, or just the mouse. And this is what I have to say about the two-player mode, is that when you want to play with two players, then one player uses the keyboard and the other one uses the mouse. Which is very different, but I guess that's better than like two people huddling around over the keyboard. So let me go over the keyboard first. So, playing with the keyboard, I actually think feels the best when it comes to walking around and attacking and everything. Although, if you're just pressing the attack button by tapping it over and over, it may feel very stiff and slow, but the thing is though, you have to hold the attack button in order to get it to feel really good. At least I found that it worked a lot better, because just by tapping it, it definitely got really tedious and annoying. And one of the other keys allows you to block, which is pretty self-explanatory, you just hold that button and you block. And if you press the escape key, then it brings up the menu with stats, save, load, and end game. The fact that this game has a save anywhere feature is pretty handy, I will say that. But the one problem I have with the keyboard though, is that I could not figure out for the life of me how to use my items. I literally pressed every single key that you could think of on my keyboard, and it didn't do shit. And unfortunately, trying to look up information on an obscure game like this on how to play it is uh, not very easy to do, so yeah, that kinda sucks. I have no idea how you're supposed to use your items on keyboard mode. But now, if you want to use the mouse for the game, using the mouse for this game is very awkward. Now, as you can tell, the game is showing that I have two cursors. One of those is like the cursor for my computer, and the other one is for the in-game cursor. And the in-game cursor is the only one that it recognizes, and sometimes it doesn't fall through with that. 
It's just one of those emulation things I can never figure out how to get working properly, at least with Anex86. I did manage to get it to work with another game on Neko Project, but the thing is, this game doesn't get supported on Neko Project for whatever reason. It's probably the format that I have the game downloaded, but whatever. But anyways, as for the mouse controls, like I said, even with, like, that weird issue, it's still really awkward, because, like, you have to, like, make sure, like, the arrow is actually, like, pointing where the direction of where the character wants to move, and then if you want to attack, then you gotta click on the character when your cursor turns into, like, that, like, crosshair. And then blocking is used with right-click. And using the items is not a total mystery, because all you gotta do is that you just gotta click on them. In the bring of the menu, you just gotta click on the character's portrait and the menu will pop up. So being able to use all that works fine, but it's just moving around that just is really a pain in the ass with the mouse. So pretty much, if you're gonna be playing this game cooperatively, whoever's gonna be using the mouse, you gotta have a lot of patience. But this makes me wonder though, why couldn't they just make this game have an option where you get to play as both the keyboard and the mouse at the same time? You know, being able to use the keyboard to move around and attack easier, but also being able to use your items with the mouse. Like, that would make so much sense. So yes, unfortunately there's a few technical things that are just not done very well. So now let's get moving on to the game's graphics, and graphically, I think this game looks really nice. But before we get there, there is one amusing thing I have to say is that you can switch between two modes, being uh, CRT and LCD. So looking at it with CRT makes the game look really nice, but if you switch to LCD, then the game looks like you just went to the negative zone. And yeah, it looks like complete garbage, so don't even bother with that mode unless you really like looking at this shit. But that aside, I do think this is a pretty nice looking game. I really do love the character designs. In fact, I do find that the human warrior character, I find he kind of looks a little bit like Adol from the East games if he was blue. And ironically enough, there was going to be a game I was going to review for this one that was going to be called uh, Zok. It's a East clone where the main character looks a lot like Adol, but if he was blue, so I thought that was kind of funny. And I do find that the elf character kind of reminds me of something from Records of Lotus War, which is pretty dope. But yeah, I'm a huge sucker for this art style, and of course I really do love the backgrounds for the cutscenes, I think they all look really good. I really do love the portraits in the game, I also love the sprites in-game, I actually do think those do look pretty good for uh, miniatures. But the stage backgrounds, I do think they do have some good details, but I think there needs to be a little bit more variety. And while I do think that the border and the UI of the menu of this does look really cool, I do think it could have been uh, utilized a little better. Like I find the section where your items are, I think that could be a little bit bigger. And maybe on the other side, they should just have, like, an actual map, because, you know, this game doesn't have one, or at least as far as I know it doesn't have one. But other than that, I do think this is a pretty nice-looking PC-98 game for the time it was released. So now, as for the game's music, the music in this game is pretty decent. It's definitely not as great as many other uh, awesome PC-98 soundtracks I've heard, but I don't think it's too bad. Like, it's fitting to the game, and there is some nice sounding tracks, but nothing super catchy or memorable. Although I will say that the uh, menu screen theme, I do find that song is a little bit too obnoxious for this type of game. But the song during the opening cutscene though, I do think that's pretty cool sounding. But yeah, I'd say it's a decent OST. Not great, but not terrible. So now, if you wanted to go out and buy this game, surprisingly, I actually found one copy. Yeah, just one. And it happens to go for $106. And it's complete and everything. Has, like, the case, the manual, all the floppy disks. I hardly ever see uh, PC-98 games on eBay, so I almost didn't bother looking it up, but thankfully I did, and I actually found a copy of it. Sure, it's expensive as hell, but I kind of expected as much. But hey, for the 1% uh, of you out there that actually managed to have an actual PC-98 lying around, well, you can uh, get yourself a copy of this game. Though, of course, it's not like it's gonna go to the original creators of it, but still, if you wanna own it, then there it is. So now, as for my overall thoughts on Orstadia, you know, I'm pretty sure it's Orstadia, but Orstadia doesn't really sound that cool. Well, Orstadia doesn't sound cool either, but anyways, you get the point. So what do I think? Well, 
when I was playing this, I was actually kind of liking it and was actually enjoying its simple uh, combat system and just wandering around a dungeon with some cool graphics and some nice uh, relaxing music, but here's the problem though. There's just a lot of simple things that they just couldn't get right. So like I said about using keyboard mode, that trying to figure out how to use the items in this game is like a real fucking mystery when it really shouldn't be. I mean what, was there not enough keys on a keyboard? Like I said, playing single player should utilize both the keyboard and the mouse. I don't know why it has to be one or the other. I mean, I get it for a uh, two player mode for co-op play, but I don't get why they had to do that for single player. Now, could you imagine if there was a game where you only were able to use half the controller? Like, one half the controller you can use, but the other half pff, doesn't do fuck all. Like, it'd be fucking stupid, right? Well, that's basically what it feels like here, and it really does uh, pain me to say that, because other than that, I was actually kind of liking it, but it just had to be ruined by some technical issues. And before anyone asks, yes, the PC-98 emulators do support uh, controller support, but only for certain games that actually use controller support, because the PC-98 also does have a controller as well, but this game is not supported by it, so yeah, that option was out. So I think this is a game that would probably be better if you're playing with, like, another person, but then again, who the hell is gonna play this game with you? Because, like, who the hell is gonna be like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna play some Orstadia on the PC-98, y'all? I mean, I probably would be that guy, but the thing is, I don't think anyone else would, and it's a shame, because I almost really wanted to like this game. Yeah, it's not a, like, crazy mind-blowing experience, it doesn't steer the wheel of action RPGs. But I thought it was kind of a fun, simple, top-down action RPG that was not roguelike. I was actually kind of enjoying it for what it was, but like I said a bunch of times, it's just uh, the way how they did the technical control schemes of this just doesn't make any damn sense. Also, there's just no map system, which is kind of assy. And one thing that I forgot to mention is that whenever you start a new game, you have to watch the opening cutscene, and it feels really long, and you can't skip it, so yeah, get used to that. So, I almost like this game, but unfortunately I just can't, which is a damn shame, because I really want to. But anyways, so yeah, obviously, it's not a game I would highly recommend on the system, but if you can manage to convince someone to play with you for two-player mode, then maybe the experience would be pretty interesting. But other than that though, yeah, it's definitely not the best one. But maybe someday someone will not only do a fan translation of the game, but they can also fix some of those uh, issues that I mentioned, because there are people that are willing to do that type of shit. Although the chances of it happening for a game like this seems unlikely, but if it ever did though, I would be willing to try it again. But with that being said, I'm gonna end things here, because there's really not much else I can say. So with that said, thanks for watching, commenting, and have yourselves a great day.